and get all your questions answered tonight. Um, welcome to the IMC 610 instructor panel. I am Amber Novotny, and I know I've spoke, uh, had the opportunity to speak with many of you students already. I am the student advisor for the IMC uh, program here at the W.B. Reed College of Media. So I wanted to go through tonight's agenda. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is go through and let the instructors in introduce themselves. And then we are going to review your pre-submitted questions. So these were all the questions that you guys uh, submitted to the forum before the session. And then we're going to go ahead and do um, an open Q&A where you guys can ask any additional questions that you have um, to the instructors. So for our uh, instructor panelists tonight, we have all of the IMC 610 instructors for spring 2018. So I'm going to go ahead and ask them to introduce themselves. So Matthew, if you would go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, a few things that you think are important to know about the IMC 610 class. Thank you, Amber. I appreciate it and welcome everyone and congratulations on your uh, acceptance to the IMC program. So I have taught IMC 610 for 11 years. I graduated from the IMC program in 2006. Uh, professionally, I'm currently Senior Marketing Communications Specialist at Erie Insurance Group, which is a Fortune 500 uh, insurance company based here in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, prior to that, I was Assistant Director of Online Programs for the College of Media down in Morgantown at WVU. And I also had a career in um, public education communications, and I uh, also worked agency side and in uh, radio broadcasting way back, and actually got my bachelor's degree in radio um, at Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania. Something to uh, remember about uh, something important, if you will, about IMC 610. Um, it's, uh, it's an introduction class. It's designed really to give you a foundation um, and, and expose you to the various topics that you'll be studying with greater depth as you move through the IMC program. And so it really moves fast and we spend about a week in each uh, topic area, um, but it's a great foundation and really helps get students not only uh, accustomed to IMC and the various concepts, but also to develop their routine that they can carry forth uh, through the rest of the program. Great, thank you so much, Matthew. Um, so next we, we have Bonnie Harris. So Bonnie, um, if you would please introduce yourself and if you have any helpful tips for the IMC 610 class. I'm Bonnie Harris. I've taught 610, I guess, for maybe five years now. And I'm a graduate of the IMC program. I graduated in 2007 as well. Um, so a little bit about me. I grew up in the technology industry and was not a marketer then, but moved out of that and into marketing when I started my firm, Wax Marketing, about 15 years ago. And we do integrated marketing for primarily B2B companies um, and work with in a lot of different industries, but primarily in healthcare, finance, uh, social services, and tech, of course, since that's where I come from. When I think about the IMC program, and particularly 610, sometimes I think the hardest hurdle, or what can be a hard hurdle for people, is that it's very, graduate school is very different from undergraduate school. We really focus on critical thinking. We don't focus on absorbing information and reiterating it back. And so I, I want you to enter 610 understanding this, that there's going to be kind of a mind shift that might be quite different from your previous college experience. And it can feel kind of overwhelming. But the more you reach out to your instructors and classmates, I mean, I think the more you'll enjoy it. Um, I know there are some other questions about this later. So I'm going to just uh, finish there and pass it on. Great. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And yes, we will get to some really good questions later. So, um, And finally, we have Bill Nevin. So Bill, if you could please uh, give us a little bit about yourself and any helpful hints you have for the program or the class. Well, thanks, uh, Amber, and uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my bio is, uh, <laughs> is very similar to Matthew's. Um, I uh, 
began teaching in the program in 2007, so it's uh, been 10 years uh, going into my 11th year of teaching. And like Matthew and Bonnie, I am a graduate of the program as well. Uh, I began actually in the, the first cohort of students when the university adopted the master's degree program in IMC in the fall of 2003 and graduated in 2006 and then was brought on board as uh, an instructor in 2007. Um, prior to, um, to that, I worked, uh, as Matthew did, in radio for about 20 years. Uh, professionally right now, I am the Assistant Vice President of Communications for the WVU Foundation. The foundation is the fundraising arm of the university, and I've been there for 10 years. Before that, I worked at WVU in their public relations and media relations division for six years. And as I mentioned, my undergraduate degree is in radio television from Southern Illinois University. Uh, that gives you a little bit of a uh, biography of, of me. Uh, in terms of uh, IMC 610, um, I think uh, from the standpoint of coming in as a, a graduate student, this is your, kind of your first go around, um, we're going to really challenge you right off the bat in that you're going to have to put together uh, an IMC campaign. You're going to kind of um, learn by fire, as they say. Um, you're going to begin right away with a real world client, and you're going to have to put together a campaign. What's interesting is also along the way, you'll put together campaigns in other classes as well. And in your capstone class, you'll put together a campaign. And I, th I always think it's probably interesting for students to take a look at their first campaign they did in our class and then take a look at their capstone uh, final project as well. And there's probably a huge difference there. You're going to learn a lot in this program, but we're, we're going to challenge you right off the bat. Great, thank you so much. And um, I do want to move into our pre-selected questions. So our students did submit questions for our panelists tonight. Um, and I want to go ahead and move into those next. So the first question goes to Bonnie. And um, the question is, what are the most important things I should know about the IMC program and the IMC 610 course? What should I expect? Uh, I can't hear your mic, Bonnie. I can see you're, you're talking, but I can't hear you. Um, yeah, sure. So we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, switch this one. We'll give it to uh, Matthew, if you would. Uh, what are the most important things I should know about the IMC program and the 610 course? Uh, what should I expect? Uh, thank you. Um, so what I would say, uh, you know, the most important things you should know about the program is it's really a practitioner's program. Um, I am living proof um, of, of that. As, as a student coming into the program, and, and I also had some experiences in other programs, um, I was really looking for something that was practical and something that I could learn, uh, you know, learn today, apply tomorrow. That's really not just a tagline for the program. It's reality. And so it really is something that's useful. Um, and I would, I would give, you, um, give you advice to really apply that uh, in your real world um, work situation as best as you, as best you can. Uh, it will help you understand the concepts uh, as well uh, as you move through all of the, all of the topics that we'll cover in, uh, in IMC 610 uh, specifically. So the 610 course is really laid out, as Bill mentioned, in a plan. So you really approach it 
um, as an agency and you're tackling uh, various sections as you move along. So you're going to do your brand research. Um, you're going to identify objectives and strategies for your campaign. Uh, you're going to develop a creative brief, um, you know, use, use the, uh, the industry template to develop a creative brief for your campaign. You're going to set media objectives and strategies. Uh, you're going to move through and, um, and, and, and also uh, work, work around earned media as well. And so that's really what you should expect, um, and that is to to come in and strive to compete uh, really against your against your classmates um, in a you know as you would if you were running an agency. And so those would be the two things, and and maybe Bill has has something to add to that. Um, but uh, that's what I would say are most important things, and and what you should really expect as you come into the to the classroom. Great, thank you, Matthew and Bill and Bonnie. Um, do you guys have anything to add to that? I think Matthew did a did a really good job um, explaining what the program is like. Um, we're, we're really going to put you to work by actually, uh, you know, putting together a campaign, and you're going to have to uh, put together all of the different components, and uh, it's. As Matthew said, you're really going to be able to uh, to learn it and then apply it, and that's what I think is really one of the values of this program. And this is Bonnie. I would just reiterate also what Matthew said. You know, the the greatest thing about the IMC program is that it gives you information that you can take back to work the next day, no matter what class you're in. And I think that. You know, having been through undergrad in economics, which has nothing to do with what I'm doing now, um, that was one of the greatest things for me. And I still use in my agency. I use pieces from the IM, from this program every single day. So I think when you start it, just be ready to dive in and know that this is going to be information that you're going to be using for the rest of your career. And um, it's it's worth spending the time and 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 spending the detailed attention to. To give it sort of that that it's due as you as you start with six ten. And if I could add one more thing there, um, in terms of what should I expect, uh, I would say that you should expect this to be unlike any other online course that you may have taken, um, whether you took it as a graduate student or an undergrad student. Uh, I hear that a lot from students um, in the final week of the course when we say, you know, how was this experience for you? Um, they say this is so unlike any other course where I just went on and I and I you know contributed some discussions and submitted an assignment and I got a little bit of feedback from my instructor. You're going to be engaged um, and and look at the names that are here under participants. There are 13 of them of them here, and uh, you're going to be engaged with these students in the classroom in a way that that I think you don't expect, uh, and that's exciting. So I think you'll enjoy that. All right, thank you guys. Um, so the next one then, I am going to kick to Bonnie. Um, what are a few things that a new IMC student can do to be better prepared for the first day of class? Well, I would say um, to be prepared for the first day of class, one of the things, and, and for any days of class, <laughs> I should say, one of the things that I think people tend to do, and I know I've done this, I've been guilty of it myself, is they tend to kind of skip through some of the detail that's involved in the course summary and the agendas and sort of when things are due. If, if it were me and I were restarting again, I would probably spend a bit of time making sure that I've read everything in that syllabus, everything in that summary, and understand more about the requirements of the course, when things are due, what time they're due, um, when you're going to have homework assignments. Because one of the things that's really hard as you kind of jump into graduate school, and this is graduate school for anything, is fitting it into your current life. And if you have a good understanding before this course starts, because I mean, it is a fire hose of information, and it moves really fast, as Matthew said. So if you, if you look at all of those requirements and start to think about how you're going to incorporate, for example, reading the lesson, doing the readings, 
you know, what time of day discussions, writing discussions might work for you, and, and get a little bit, um, think a little bit about the organization of your day and your evening and when you might try to do these things. I think that would really, really help because that's, that's where people start to really struggle. It is a lot of information. It's a lot of work. And just having a little bit of, a little bit of an idea ahead of time of when you're going to be doing things, how much time you might think they might take. And there's a lot of really good information in the IMC program uh, website itself. But there's a ton of information in the course summary and, and the syllabus. I, I can't tell you how many people get into the second week and they, they still haven't looked at some of those in detail. And I would also look at just at a high level all you know how the lessons flow so that you know that you know by the end of that week period of time what you're going to need to be doing and what you'll be doing each week. Yeah, that's a really good point, Bonnie. Um, I think it's important to remember, too, for our students that they can have access to all of this information from the very first day of class. So it's something that you should definitely go in and review, like Bonnie suggested. Um, Bill or Matthew, do you guys have anything to add to that? Uh, you know, I, I would say figure out a routine. Um, and you can even, you know, figure that out in the first week. But you can start to plan that now. Um, even begin blocking out some time on your calendar each evening and treat it like a meeting that you can't miss or a commitment that you can't miss. Blocking time is, is one of the most helpful things uh, to do. And, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, those are the days with deadlines, as, as, you'll, as you'll see. And I know we have a question coming up uh, related to that. Those will be your big days with deadlines. But really spreading the workload out throughout the week will help make it manageable. Um, I'll tell you this, I do the same thing as an instructor. Uh, every evening, you know, I work on the class for an hour or two. Uh, at lunchtime, Monday through Thursday, uh, I spend an hour on it as well. So really blocking that time and reserving that time uh, now and sort of, sort of carving it out will, uh, will be beneficial as, as class gets started in January. Great, thank you. Um, so we'll go ahead and move to the next question. And this one goes to Bill. So from your perspective, what is the value of being in class with students from different educational and professional backgrounds? Well, that's a great question. And uh, typically in uh, an IMC 610 class, there's anywhere from between normally around 15 to 20 students and oftentimes I'll, I'll get a student the first couple days in who will say after people post their, uh, their introductions that wow I, I just don't have any of the experience that uh, some of the other classmates have and my response is always to them that you know we we're all marketers in some way. We've, we've tried to sell ourselves. Uh, we're all consumers. Um, so we have all of these personal experiences that we can bring to the table. And I also say that I think I was maybe 39, 40 years old when I started in the program. And I certainly uh, had a lot to learn from some of the younger students who had just came out of uh, maybe a, a bachelor's degree program and then uh, there was just a lot of different things that were happening that I really needed to catch up on in the industry. New trends and things like that that I was picking up from some of the younger students who had been taught that in the classroom and that's why I was kind of coming back to learn some more. So I think we all kind of work together as a team in, in uh, IMC 610 and while you are given individual grades and you have to do individual assignments and discussion board uh, posts and that type of thing, uh, oftentimes people are really learning from each other based on their experience, uh, based on things that they've maybe picked up as a student that's you know just coming out of college. So I think that's really one of the wonderful things about this program is typically you have students from maybe not just even marketing or communications backgrounds that are coming in. You're having them from different areas and you can have life experience as well that you can add to it and uh, it really makes for a, 
sometimes a very lively discussion board uh, opportunity each week. Great, thank you, Bill. I know Bonnie and Matthew being um, graduates of the program and now instructors of the program, do you guys have anything to add um, to that? You know, the, well, this is Bonnie, and one of the things that really surprised me, and I guess it, maybe it shouldn't have, but I'm still really good friends and I, what I call virtual colleagues with so many people that I was in class with back in 2007 and, I, and also my, my professors. And so what I loved about the program was, first of all, when I was going through it, there were people, like, you know, as Bill was saying, from across the country with all kinds of background, but after I left, I continued those um, relationships, and I've even, you know, a couple of the instructors, we've done projects together and such. So I love that my network, my professional network, is so enriched from going through the program and being an alumni, or alumnus, I should use the correct grammar. And, uh, you know, something that's underutilized in, uh, in 610, and really in all the courses, um, and it relates to this question, is the social forum. And Bonnie mentioned the professional network. Uh, you have an incredible opportunity being part of this learning community to really get to know each other because guess what? Some of you are going to be hiring people uh, in the future. Um, some of you are going to know about jobs that come up. And the IMC program does a, does a good job of sharing that through the, through the job board. But uh, you're going to be in class with 16, 17, 18 um, other marketing communications professionals. So take advantage of that because where they go uh, and where you go over the next 30 or 40 years in your career, um, you know, really, really is valuable. Thank you guys so much. We're moving on to question four, and this question is for you, Matthew. Um, can you provide a glimpse into how the course is set up? Sure. Um, you know, so the courses are completely asynchronous in nature. Um, and we really mean that. And we hold to that commitment. So it's asynchronous for you and it's asynchronous for your instructors as well. So each week you'll have a discussion prompt and an assignment. And uh, we'll ease into IMC 610 with an intro discussion during the first week. Ecampus is the learning platform that we use here. It's, it's, um, it's based on Blackboard. It's, it's a Blackboard product. Uh, it's very easy to use. You'll have a, a course introduction section, uh, and that will include a syllabus, a welcome message, and also a Blackboard preview video, which I, I know Rick is going to share here in about three seconds, and there it is. Um, so you'll be able to, uh, to, to check that out in advance uh, if you haven't already done so. The course content section of eCampus will include your weekly lesson. And this is really designed to be the instructor's um, lecture and lesson notes. You also have some supplemental readings um, each week to, to check out and the homework Dropbox. You'll also have a link to the course discussion boards and uh, the assignment pages in course content as well. So the assignment page uh, is really your guide. Um, it tells you what you need to read that week, what the discussion prompt is, and what the assignment prompt is, and then also what the learning objectives are. Because, you know, as you go along, you really want to make sure that you are hitting all of the concepts uh, that the course is designed to deliver to you. So you'll be engaged on the discussion board. I mentioned that uh, throughout the week, posting your initial response on or before Wednesday, and then responding to your classmates, who will in turn respond to your post too uh, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And the discussion wraps up uh, on Friday evening. Uh, again, it's asynchronous in nature, so you don't have to be there Friday evening. Um, hopefully you've been engaged in, in the discussion after you posted your initial on Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday. Um, so five total posts is required, one initial response to the course prompt by Wednesday, and at least four responses to your classmates by Friday. But I would say most students, um, especially in, in 610, uh, who are in this to learn, average probably about 10 posts per week because they're really enjoying the level of engagement 
and that professional uh, interaction that's taking place around a topic rather than viewing it as a chore or a box that you have to check. So again, you'll have an intro discussion that's not graded in your first week, then you'll have six graded discussions throughout the course. Those are worth 15 points each. You'll also have six graded assignments, and they're worth 20 points each. Um, or actually, uh, five graded assignments worth 20 points each, and then you'll have a final project. That'll be the sixth assignment. Uh, there are 240 total points available in the course. And um, that pretty much that pretty much gives you an overview of of how the the course is set up. In terms of content that you'll cover, uh, we'll begin in IMC 610 with an orientation and an introduction. Uh, we'll then move into brand research in the second week, uh, planning and audience insight. You'll define the the target audience for your client uh, in week three. We'll discuss the integrated creative strategy and creative briefs uh, and creative strategy statements in the fourth week. We'll, uh, we'll focus on paid media in IMC in week five. Week six is earned and owned media in IMC. And we'll wrap things up with uh, evaluation and measurement in week seven before you submit your final project. All sounds easy, right? Um, but that's really the, the, course, uh, the course setup and the structure. Great, thank you so much, uh, Matthew. And I want to thank Rick for sharing that uh, link at the bottom. You guys should definitely copy that, save it, check it out later. It's also this uh, IMC Blackboard course preview is in the orientation classroom. So if you forget to, to look at this link, you can always log into the orientation classroom before classes start and check out the preview in there as well. So moving on to question five. And this question is going to go to Bonnie. How can a student be successful in a strictly online program without the face-to-face -face conversations uh, with fellow students and instructors? Well, as Matt, I'm going to just kind of add on to what Matthew was saying. I think that this this surprised me when I went through the course and I, the program, and I think it will surprise you guys as well, that it's so interactive. And I think that what you can really do to make this experience as rich as possible is remember that there are a lot of ways to interact with other students and with your instructor that aren't part of the the structured weekly discussion or homework assignment. There's a social board. Um, I always recommend that students connect on social media. Um, I love it when students send me an email through the WVU email program and introduce themselves. And I think that any time you have a question, please feel free to address or to email your instructor directly. I see so many students that, that feel like because it's online that they don't have a personal or they're not, they don't have that access to the instructor. But one of the best parts about teaching 610 and one of the things that I really love is that we do get to work with students one-on-one -on -one when they need help or to answer questions and getting to know them and getting to um, hear about their lives and, and their experiences in 610 is one of the best parts about it. So don't be afraid to reach out. I think every instructor may have a little, a few, a, you know, kind of different preferences about how they like to be reached and when they like to be reached and, um, you know, whether they want to connect with you on email or through the, through the message system. Find that out, ask them, you'll look at the, make sure that you look at the course updates and expectations board as well as the main discussion as well because the instructors will write a lot of helpful hints and tips on that particular section of the course. And many of them, most of them, I guess all of them, will tell you, you know, how they want to be reproached. If some of them have regular, some people have regular office hours, we're all a little bit different because we all have different lives. Um, you know, I'm self-employed, so I'm a little bit more flexible during the day than some of others may be. But, you know, find out how they want to be access, you know, how you can access them for help. And don't wait if you're struggling. Ask the question right away because I guarantee you everybody a lot of people feel really overwhelmed, particularly at the beginning. And we want you to have a good experience. And we want you to get the answers to your questions quickly so that you can move on and really enjoy your 610 experience. That's some really, really great advice, Bonnie. Um, Bill or Matthew, do you guys have anything to add to that one? 
I think some of the things that Bonnie and, and Matthew have, have touched upon in answering that question are, are really spot on. I know as an instructor, um, the course is, is short, and I really immerse myself in it by um, checking in several times a day. Um, I have access to um, email almost 24-7, and I know as a faculty member we're not required to uh, necessarily respond immediately on weekends to our students' questions, but I don't know, I've always made it a point to immediately get back to a student who might have a question or an issue or need a clarification about something that they're reading or an assignment. And uh, it goes by quickly, but as Bonnie indicated, um, there's just a lot of interaction. And as a student, I would highly encourage you, if you do have a, a question or a clarification, by all means, reach out to your instructor. That's what we're there for. Is, is to help you. And um, don't feel like I've had some students say, well, you know, I don't want to bother you on a Saturday or a Sunday. Well, that's kind of what I'm there for. I'm there to help. And so um, I encourage you to, to reach out to your instructor with any question you might have concerning the course. I'd like to add, um, and it's something that I just learned recently. So I'm a graduate of the program uh, 11 years ago have been teaching in the program since that time. And when I started this new role um, at Erie Insurance, we, we, our footprint is um, across 13 states. And I would say, I believe it's about 40% of our employees are remote employees, including some vice presidents. And uh, one of the things in my onboarding that they said would be a tough adjustment and was for a lot of employees is to get used to a distributed and remote workforce. Um, and I was at a great advantage because I had already learned how to interact uh, in this type of an online environment without face-to-face -face conversation. So I have to work with a brand strategy, vice president of brand strategy who's in North Carolina. Um, and we don't have the opportunity to talk face-to-face, -face, but our interactions are, are solid just as they will be in this online classroom. So that was something that I just learned recently as, as being a benefit to learning in this type of environment and teaching in this type of environment uh, is that, you know, the workforce of the future is moving in this direction as well. Great. Thank you, guys. So question six um, is going to go to Bill. And um, how much time should I be committing to discussions, readings, and assignments each week? That's a great question. And uh, I think it's, it's one that there's, there's really no magic answer. Um, but I will say, uh, if you really want to be committed to the program, it's it's going to take some sacrifice, and it's, it's going to be a lot um, if you want to do well. Um, it, it, you know, I, I could say six, I could say eight hours, I could say ten hours. It, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to vary from student to student, um, but I think in IMC 610, there is a lot of reading. Uh, there's a lot of assignments uh, that, that have reading involved in them. Um, so that's going to take a, a good bit of your time. Um, you are going to have, as Matthew laid out, you're going to have a, a discussion, a main discussion post that you need to complete by Wednesday. You need to have discussion posts done by Friday in response. Uh, then you also have an assignment due almost every week as well. So um, if, you're, if you're going to do over and above what most students, uh, you know, probably put in, you're going to be spending a good bit of time uh, each week. Uh, it goes by quickly. We cover a lot of materials. Uh, you just almost have to immerse yourself in it. Um, but um, it, it's, it's hard to put uh, an hour number uh, to it. I don't know if maybe Matthew or Bonnie have, have uh, some some comments that they want, want to make in, in terms of this question, but uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's going to take a good bit of your time. There's just no question about that. 
And this is Bonnie, and I guess this is a tip that I give people a lot. And you may, you know, Matthew and Bill may, may work differently, but in terms of the number of hours, you know, it's hard to say because it, everybody reads differently, everybody organizes their time differently. I think one thing that I do see is that people think they can do discussion posts and their discussions very quickly. And to write a fully substantive discussion post would take me often a couple of hours. I mean, so understand that the discussion is not an ad hoc quick conversation. These are like mini assignments that you're going to be writing every week. And plan accordingly for both your initial post and your four responses so that they are fully substantive and you do um, you do get full points for them. The other thing I'm going to say is that I see a lot of people, especially when people kind of come straight out of undergrad, that go to their textbook reading first and try to read all of those things first. And what I'd highly recommend is to read the lesson first. Um, we use a textbook that has a lot of great information. Um, every chapter won't be won't be focused entirely or map exactly to the lesson. So I always tell people to read the lesson first and then read the chapter and spend the most time on those part, portions of the chapter that align with the lesson. And do read the readings. I mean, it, it always um, surprises me how many people don't use readings to substantiate their, their discussion posts when they're provided right there. Um, they can really kind of, you don't skim them, do read them. They can really provide some, some great um, complementary information that will help with your critical thinking as you go through this. But it, it's hard to say how long it's going to take each person because everybody has a different rhythm for how they do it. And part of 610, part of the purpose of 610 is figuring out how, what your own personal rhythm and your own time organization is going to be about. And it really comes down to where your strengths are as well. So if you're working in public relations, maybe you've worked in PR for, you know, five, ten years, um, you may have an easier time starting the public relations assignment and, and, and focusing on earned media and discussing that than you would say paid media. Whereas if you're a, a media, if you if you've been a media planner for ten years, uh, you'd find that that week um, you might be able to spend a little bit less time. I think one of the important things to to consider as you sort of map out your strategy is is not to not to have huge chunks of time. I, I don't think, um, and I know even as an instructor, my my workflow is I spend my lunch hours five hours um, during the week, and I try to do uh, you know an hour or two on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I, uh, I try to disconnect a little bit on the weekends. Obviously, I'll respond to any student emails all weekend long, but I try not to grade and do other things. And so that adds up to about 12 to, to 13 hours a week. And I think students uh, typically fall in that range as well. And I know I've shared my workflow with a number of students who have sort of adopted a similar one. And uh, so whatever, whatever works for you. Great, thank you guys. I think that's some really good insights on time management as you move through all the courses in the program. Um, so question seven is going to go to Bonnie. Where do you see students struggling the most in the program? Um, I see people, and this is just from teaching 610 for a long time, and I'm sure Bill and Matthew have other thought, have have seen similar things. There's a couple of things I see. Um, one is that they have not gone through, as I mentioned before, the syllabus, the, the course summary. They don't understand the details of what's required of them, and they sort of get caught short um, writing their first substantive post and realizing, oh, holy cow, you know, I'm starting this at 10 o'clock at night. It's due at 11.55 p.m., and this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. So always give yourself plenty of time and don't don't assume that, that you might have been able to do something in undergrad in a certain period of time that it's not going to take longer in the IMC. Because the other thing I see people struggling with is this, this program in graduate school in general is not about absorbing the information and just um, showing your instructor that you've absorbed the information by re-summarizing it or 
um, writing research papers. We're really asking you, as, as Bill and Matthew were saying earlier, you're going to be working on a campaign and you're going to be required to contribute your own personal voice in this and use critical thought. So you're going to be absorbing the information, but you're going to be writing back to us um, your own analysis of that information and what you think should be done and what you think the goals should be. And so that can be a huge difference for a lot of people, particularly when they're coming straight out of undergrad. I mean, a lot of people who've been in um, in the workforce for a while may already be kind of used to sort of applying their own um, opinion. If you're someone like me, you love giving your opinion all the time, so it wasn't a hard part. But that's um, that's where they they struggle. And the third thing I would say is what I what I said before is that a lot of students don't don't reach out as quickly as they should. And as Bill said, and and I believe this in Matthew, we love helping you guys. And we look forward to those questions. And they're never, I've never gotten a, what I would consider a quote unquote silly question or you know, you're afraid of asking a dumb question. There is no such thing. There, there are only answers that might not be as great. But don't wait. If you're struggling, don't feel like you're, you're all alone because a lot of people feel overwhelmed when they start 610. And the best thing that you can do is just contact your instructor and say, you know what, I don't get this. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Can you help me with my time management? Can you help me with this assignment? I'm not sure what you want. Um, you know, that's the that's probably the the best way to kind of get yourself out of a out of that situation very quickly. And just to add to that, we um, you know, and I think I can speak for Bill and Bonnie because I know them well and we're all friends. Um, we would much rather spend 15 minutes on a Saturday responding to a question than spend 45 minutes grading your work and and sharing why you know this didn't meet the expectation, um, even just for us, right? So help us help you. And I'd like to add as well that uh, to what Bonnie had mentioned earlier about some students come into the program and they don't thoroughly read everything that we provide them. They don't take several hours just to read through the syllabus. We also provide rubrics uh, on, on how we look at your discussion posts and your assignments and we apply it as we grade them. And so really make it a point to look at the rubric and follow it. That's how we're going to be grading the assignments and the discussion posts. And I find that some students don't bother to read those, and then they'll be questioning why uh, I gave a certain grade and why I said certain comments about, uh, you know, maybe an assignment. But I always try to refer back to the rubric. So if you try to follow that rubric for both the discussion posts and the assignments, and 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 that will really help you uh, to to do well. All right, great, thank you guys. So um, this is some really, really good insight into the program and to be respectful of everybody's time, I'm gonna go ahead and ask the next uh, few questions to the instructors individually and then we'll have a few short minutes for Q&A. But I'm sure the instructors would be happy to you know, speak with you more in depth um, at a later time via phone or email if you have any additional questions that don't get answered tonight. Uh, but we'll go ahead and move on to question eight, which is going to go to Matthew. Who should I contact if I have questions about coursework or assignment? Uh, your uh, us, um, your instructors, and and I think it's been clear. We've been we've been talking now for forty five minutes. I think it's um, clear that. Um, you know, Professor Nevin, Professor Harris, and I, and anyone teaching IMC 610, we want you to succeed. And so, um, really, we are your best source um, for, for that information if you have a question about coursework or assignments. There really are no gotcha questions or assignments here in grad school. Um, you know, this is different from undergrad. You, you shouldn't really encounter any instructors who are in this to, to trick you or really challenge you with some elusive set of questions or assignments that you have to figure out. So we're here to help you succeed, that's it. And we'd love nothing more than for every student 
uh, to earn an A, right, Bill and Bonnie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say my favorite discussions are when everybody in the discussion that week gets a perfect score. I mean, I that's what I'm gunning for, and, and the only way that can happen is if I give you as much information as you need. All right. Thank you, guys. So question number nine is going to go to Bill. What is the one thing students say, I wish I would have known going into the IMP program? To go back to, uh, I'm not sure if it was Matthew or, or Bonnie, but I, I think graduate school is different. It's, I, I found it to be much, much different than what I was used to when I got my undergraduate degree. There's, um, there's some freedom. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, we're not going to tell you that a paper has to be three pages in length and it has to have two citations and it has to be uh, yada yada yada. We're going to give you some um, directives as to what you should include in it and we're going to tell you that you probably need to have some sources uh, from outside cited in your paper but you know, you're, you've got to wow us. We we are looking for students that go above and beyond, and this is laid out in the grading rubric. Um, but um, there's there's some there's some freedom involved in graduate school. Um, you're going to be able to go out there and be able to do some research and and present something to an instructor um, that you know you're, you're trying to really wow us. Uh, so. It, it, you've got some flexibility there and I think as students come in that maybe have not been in graduate school they're looking for really some strict uh, guidelines as to what we're looking for and while we'll lay some of those guidelines out you're, you're going to have some freedom you're going to have some creative uh, freedom if you will to be able to to do some things that um, maybe in graduate school you know you didn't have that capability because you were told that it needs to be uh, 500 words and uh, you know you had you had really tight parameters on on your assignment um, so I think that's maybe what some students say I didn't realize that I could uh, really have a lot of opportunity to use my creative ability and to really go out and and to do a lot of good research and and present it uh, I think that's what's neat about graduate school and in, in, in the IMC 610 program. You're, you really have an opportunity to, to do some, some neat work on each of your assignments and put together a great campaign for a real world client um, and, and be creative. I think that's, uh, that's what some students say that they really didn't know about coming in. I'm just going to add to, um, if I may, that although I, you know, we, I agree with Matthew, we love it when all our students get A's and we love it when they get great scores on everything but what I wished I would have known is I can't tell you anybody that's asked me my GPA from the IMC program and as a as a person who's very much a perfectionist you know I came into it determined to have this amazing um, 4.0 and and all that kind of thing when I went through the program and what I wish I'd really known because about you know halfway through I was so stressed out trying to make sure that I got these good grades, what I wish I'd really known is that what was really a lot more important was the amount that I was learning, not the grades I was getting. And that um, I shouldn't expect to be able to know all of this and get these amazing grades at the very beginning. A lot of people go into 610 and at least, you know they get grades in the beginning that they're not used to getting. I mean, it is a it is a rigorous program, and they get grades that maybe you know they get what they consider a C or something on a paper, and they've never gotten that in undergrad. And all that says to me is that you know you're working towards it, you're learning, you're becoming accustomed to what Bill was saying. You know, wow, the need to really wow people, and it's stretching you, and it's stretching your ability to to use your own personal voice and to apply critical thought to these things and it takes some time. So I guess for me, 
um, what I know now is that that wealth of understanding, that learning, that critical thinking that I learned was so much more important. And honestly, the only person that's ever asked for my for my transcript has been WVU just recently when we all had to um, send them in for our instructor profiles. So. and Bill. So question 10 for Matthew. Is there anything that should be done to prepare for the course um, or particular assignment? You know, I think, uh, I think Bonnie's last answer really helps you, um, and Bill, uh, helps you prepare for the course and uh, as, you, as you get started on this. And that's really about setting your expectations accordingly. So remember, grad school, uh, as everyone has mentioned, is different from undergrad. So an undergrad, unless you did something wrong or missed something, you probably got an A or a 10 out of 10 or 20 out of 20. And grad school is, is really different. I, I often tell students that doing you know only what's required in the assignment prompt or just doing the minimum discussion is probably going to earn you a C. Um, doing that well will earn you a B, and exceeding the expectations and being among the best in the class will earn you an A. And that's really a, a difference in a graduate versus undergrad, but I think that really helps prepare you for this course. In terms of um, particular assignments, Again, strive not just to meet the expectations of the assignments and discussions each week, but strive to be a leader on the discussion board. Be the best in the class and strive to submit an assignment that's better than anyone else in the class. Think of this as a friendly competition, as if you were working for an agency and competing against everyone else in the class to win the client and decision makers um, marketing investment. Also, be sure to read the discussion prompts and assignment prompts before completing your, your readings. Then you'll be able to make some connections between what's relevant uh, in the readings, the lessons, and the text readings uh, to help you prepare your work. And be sure to read your instructor's tips and expectations before beginning your assignment. It is absolutely clear to us um, when we when we put out an expectation saying, you know, for example, make sure all objectives are measurable and you have a quantifiable number in there and uh, you don't get it, it. It's very clear to us that someone uh, is not reading the tips and expectations and giving thought to the assignment. So um, and, and you don't want to make that mistake week in and week out. The other thing I'll mention and I'll make this quick uh, is to absorb your instructor's feedback so in imc 610 this is a, it's a scaffolded assignment what that means is each piece builds on 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 another uh, and leads to the final project your instructors are going to spend hours providing you with feedback on each individual section that you can then use when you put together your final project use that feedback uh, we spend a lot of time providing that because we want you to do well, and that final project is worth 50 points. And so if you use all of the feedback and you make all of the uh, recommended revisions, there's no reason that you don't get an A on that final project. Thank you, Matthew. Moving on to question 11 here, and I'm going to throw this one over to Bonnie. What is the best advice you can give a student who's been out of class, out of the classroom for 20 plus years? It really depends on what you've been doing for those 20 plus years. I think a lot of times people come in as professionals, and I was the same way. I hadn't, I hadn't been in school for a really long time, and they're kind of worried about uh, homework and things like that. But as we've all said, graduate school is very different. Uh, developing a personal point of view and using critical thoughts and, and sort of, as Matthew was saying, trying to excel in class is very different uh, than ro you know doing things by rote as an undergrad. And oftentimes, sometimes professionals uh, who've been out of school might have a little bit of an advantage because they're more used to doing that in, in the job that they do. Or perhaps you have... Um, as, as Matthew was saying, perhaps you come out of PR or something, and so that section's going to be a little bit easier. The thing that I see often for um, 
for a student who's been out of the classroom for 20 years is the need to adapt back into academic, an academic writing style and using the APA. So I would make sure you know, that if you're used to writing in a really conversational tone or via emails or something, that you really understand what we mean by an academic style of writing and that you're, you're making sure that you're kind of jumping back into that voice, if you will, which you may not have used for a long, long time. But the great thing about the program is in each class, there are typically, I mean, there's typically a very diverse group of students. Some may have just come out of undergrad. Um, some may be professionals who've been out of school for 20 years. And so we get a really nice cross-section, and it's, it's rare that somebody is the only person in that situation or, you know, in our group. So I wouldn't worry too much about it, but those are, that's the advice that I would give you. And don't get overwhelmed with the technology. I've had some uh, students come in who maybe have not had an online course. They've been out of an academic environment for many, many years, and they are just really uh, overwhelmed with the technology and the platform. And as IMC 610 instructors who've been through the program, and I know at the time it was my first online program uh, and my first online course, there's a little bit of hand-holding that, you know, we'll, we'll take you through it and you just, you'll eventually catch on. It seems like it might be overwhelming at the start, but the, the eCampus, the, the, the black uh, board platform is, is really easy to, uh, to get used to, um, but, to, but just don't get overwhelmed. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll come to you. All right. Thank you, guys. And as we are approaching our last question here, um, I wanted to go ahead and open up the chat box at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you guys want to type any additional questions while we're answering this last question, um, feel free to do so. The last question is going to go to Bill. What advice can you share that will help me be successful in this course and the overall program? Well, that's, uh, that's really kind of what all of us have been really kind of talking about really for the last hour, even though we may have had specific questions. I think all of us have, have really touched upon different things that uh, can, can help you to be successful. I would just add one thing in terms of discussion posts. Uh, the discussion board is going to be part of every single class that you take in this program. And I would suggest that you post early and you post often. Um, and if you take that advice and start applying it in IMC 610 and continue on and use that throughout the course, uh, you, you will do well. And when I, I'm not just saying to post just to post, but really make quality posts early in the week. Respond to your classmates every day. Don't wait until Friday evening at 10 o'clock. Uh, I know some weeks that may, you know, that, that may end up being the only way that you can get your response posts in. But if you try to make it a point to really do quality work on the discussion board and be interactive, um, you're going to do very well in the program because it, the discussion points account for a, a, a large part of your grade in all of the classes. So I would just suggest that you um, you get very active on the discussion board. And as instructors, we look at that. When it comes time to do grade your discussion, we're going to look at the quality, obviously, of your posts and the quantity, but we're going to see how often have you been engaged? How often throughout the week were you on the discussion board? We have the ability to take a look and see how long you've been on there and what you've done. And we're going to really take a good look at that. And so my, my advice would be to, to post early, post often, and, and do a real good job. Post, post with quality. Great. I think this is a good question. If uh, Bonnie or Matthew, you guys have anything um, to add here for helpful tips? I, th I think Bill said, I think we have talked about that um, all through this hour. Um, I would say, I would add, just be open to feedback. Be open to learning. Don't think that 
you're supposed to walk in here knowing everything or that you're going to be able to um, hit a home run on every single assignment. Um, you're here to learn and you're here to learn how to be a, not only about integrated marketing, but in 610 particularly, how to be a good graduate student. And remember that we don't expect you to know that right off the bat. So don't don't stress so much. That's what I always tell people. Don't like overload yourself with worry about this because you'll make it through and by the end of 610 it's going to feel like you've been here forever. And the only thing I would add is just to find that routine and find that routine that works for you um, because once you get that nailed down in IMC 610 you'll be able to carry that forth uh, all the way through the capstone and uh, and you'll be able to uh, and you'll be able to succeed and, and and still balance you know work life and school all right well I would like to thank our panelists for answering our pre-submitted questions and um, I wanted to give just a few minutes for um, anybody who had any additional questions please feel free to type that in the chat box um, and we'll, we'll get those answered. And if there's anything additional, you know, after our time, we'll go ahead and have the um, instructors or I'm also here to answer any questions that you have. All right, so I'm just going to open these up to all of the instructors. Please feel free um, to just answer as, as you can here. Um, so Caleb's asking, how much design work will come into play in this course? Hey, this is Bonnie. I mean, uh, I, I just finished teaching 636, and on your capstone, there's, there's probably, if, when, and if you're talking about graphic design, I, which is what I assume you mean, it, there's, it's not required, you know, I can draw stick figures, I'm not an Adobe expert, and if you're, you're good at formatting your documents and things like that, you'll be just fine. There are later, um, later classes that go into that kind of topic more, but for this one, um, we're really just looking for clean documents, well formatted, we don't need things that are super pretty, although some people who are really good at that aspect of it, you know, in, enjoy kind of creating a document that looks really slick and cool, but it's definitely not required. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, we do have a few other students typing here, so we'll wait for their questions to pop up. So Frank is asking, this has been very beneficial. We can't wait to get started. Oh, we can't wait to have you get started here on the eight. Um, thank you, Wendy. We did have a question from Holly Hartman. Um, can we do any brand for our campaigns? For example, Nike or Michael Kors. Oh, those are two of my favorites, Holly. Um, does it need to be a brand that we are affiliated with? Uh, I'll take that one. So uh, for IMC 610, if you're going to be enrolled in the spring, uh, our client uh, for the assignments is the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And so you'll have a budget and you'll work, um, you know, on preparing a campaign for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. That said, uh, for discussions, uh, you will you will bring in other brands. You'll analyze other brands and discuss those. Um, they can be Nike. They can be Michael Kors. Um, they do not have to be a brand that you're affiliated with. Um, and so you're free to, to select. Uh, we'll give you a prompt. And so you're free to select and write about and analyze uh, any any brand that you wish. All right, thank you, Matthew. So Katie's asking, what if I don't have a marketing or communications background? Well, as I mentioned, uh, Katie, early on, the the students that we have in IMC six ten really vary in the amount of experience that they have and it's it, it's not necessarily a, a requirement that you have any marketing or communication actual uh, work experience um, you're going to be able to learn from your fellow classmates who may have a lot of that 
uh, experience, you're going to be able to, um, uh, especially in IMC 610, where really we're, we're going we're gonna to give you the basics of marketing throughout this eight-week course. You're, you're going you're gonna to really get a foundation for what integrated marketing communications is all about. And as I mentioned earlier, we're all consumers. Uh, we've all been marketers. You have that. Uh, personal experience to be able to bring to the table and bring to the discussion board as well. So um, we get a lot of students who just have finished up their undergraduate degree and, and don't have much, if any, marketing communication work experience, and and they 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 succeed. They do they do very well. Thank you, Bill. So Jean Ann is asking, are discussions like conversations or more formal and structured? Do they have several paragraphs, et cetera? Um, this is Bonnie. I, first of all, they are not like conversations. They are um, many assignments is how I describe them to people. And when you get into the course, you'll see a very detailed description of what a substantive discussion post is like um, on my course updates and in my in my program I I often put an example of what I consider to be a substantive post and the place where people kind of get into trouble sometimes is they sort of answer or their responses are sort of off the cuff or they don't have them backed up by um, credible sources or they're not incorporating the lesson into their discussion so make sure that you understand not only what that you're clear on what the what the lesson set or what the what the course materials say is a substantive post, but make sure you're also clear on what your instructor thinks is a substantive post, because instructors may have a little um, smaller things that they expect here or there that they really emphasize. And if you're not clear on that, that's that's one of those great questions to uh, approach your instructor with before you start the discussions because um, people really do they're more used to you know they're thinking of it like a forum online or something like that and this is not that you want to write in academic style you want to support your your points with credible sources and you want to show us that you've absorbed the lesson, you've applied critical thought to it, and you're answering the question thoroughly. So, um, Jeanne, that was a great question. And if I could add to what Bonnie mentioned and just talk a little bit about writing, uh, the IMC 610 program, it's, it's writing intensive. And this is a graduate program. So as an instructor, I'm going to be looking for uh, clean work that has uh, no typos, that uh, does not have misspellings, uh, that is grammatically correct, that your sentence structure, your syntax, uh, your usage is, is all done well. And I'm going to take points off if that's not the case. So another suggestion I might have, if, if that might not be a strong suit, is to have someone who you know that, uh, that, that, that that might be their strong suit, proof your work. Put another set of eyes on it. And that includes the discussion posts, and that includes the written assignments. It's really important that they be free from those types of mistakes. And one piece of advice, and, and it's really feedback, too, that I, that I find myself uh, giving on discussions is, to strive to provide the same level of quality in your responses as you do your initial uh, response to the prompt. It doesn't have to be as in-depth, all of your response posts, but if you, ha if you keep that in mind, um, so often you know, a student will really work hard on their initial response to the prompt that we provide. Uh, it'll be well-researched, it'll have graphics, uh, good citations, and then their response post will be you know, something as simple as, oh, I like Target too, I was there last week, um, great job. Uh, you know, something of that nature. So really strive to provide the same level of quality in your responses as you do your initial post. All right, thank you guys very much. Well, I appreciate, re appreciate everybody's um, time this evening, especially our instructors.
Um, our students were very excited to get you guys started on January 8th. And um, you know, if you have any additional questions, you can feel free to, to send them my way and we can get you in contact with the instructors if they're available prior to class. If not, January 8th, they will be there to assist you guys. And uh, I'll also be available anytime that you need anything. So please feel free to reach out. Welcome to the program and thank you all for attending tonight. You're welcome, Bonnie, Matthew, Bill, thank you guys so much.